So in Abu Dhabi, there was an explosion, an explosion that took place and uh, social media is circulating about fire and um, an explosion that they caught on camera. It was shared on Twitter. Now, uh, what do I think? See, uh, you remember in my previous videos, I always said, uh, now that the Houthis have attacked, even if there's a gas cylinder that explodes, everyone will say it's the Houthis, it's the drones. Now the question is, was this a drone attack or was this a gas cylinder? Your guess is as good as mine. We can speculate all we want. Uh, could, could it have been a drone? I'm no expert, I'm no military expert. Neither are you. Could it have been a gas cylinder? See, uh, the problem here is this. Because of what the Houthis are doing, and like I told you, the reason why they're doing it is because it was instigated by Saudi and uh, UAE. Okay? A poor country will not just suddenly decide, okay, we'll attack a rich country. They have to be pushed to the brink. The easiest thing to have done was try to mend. Okay, you messed up, you fucked up, you goofed up, whatever. Stop it, right? Like, see, this world islands, this farm, one, two, three, this airport, see all these projects. UAE were boasting about leadership and vision and all that. They realized it was a mistake. But they are admitting that it is a mistake. Because if you do admit, Sheikh Mohammed will look like a fool. So, they're just keeping quiet and they're acting like nothing happened. Even with this Yemen issue, there's a nice big motorbike coming, wait, let him go. They always like to make big sound. Let me walk the other way. Ah, okay. So, what I was saying was, uh, yeah, forgot what I was saying. <laughs> See now, if they, you know, these, these, these projects, they can't say it is a failure. So they have to keep quiet. They are still trying their best to salvage what was done. Imagine billions worth of sand and dredging and work has gone only for it to be a waste. It's an ecological disaster. Okay. But they can't talk about it. So they just like to sweep it under the rug. Now, even with this, the gas cylinder explosion. Some people are saying, Law, it's not being mentioned in the papers. Yeah, because they want to... They have been instructed to keep a low key, not talk about it and people will forget. But the problem is today in social media, people don't forget. People will talk about it. Twitter will share. Everyone will chatter. People want engagement. That's why people hardly check the news. I mean, how many of you trust Gulf News, Kalish Times and National Paper being in the UAE? You know that it's all, uh, you know, the sanitized version of the news. <sighs> now, if you personally ask me, this is me. Okay, this is me. Uh, the probability that it was a gas cylinder could be very high. But then, uh, the doubt comes from this sharpnel, those metal, this thing, it seems to French journalists or reporters they took a photograph and they shared this. Now, see, that is where conspiracy theories brew up. From where did these pieces come out? Okay. And if you notice another thing, Abu Dhabi has been a center of attacks. Abu Dhabi has been a center of attacks. And this explosion took place in Abu Dhabi. So, you know, one plus one. You'll always form the opinion for that, right? See, all this is doing just one thing. It's keeping people on the edge. It's making people very nervous, which is not a good thing. UAE was supposed to be the safe place, safe haven, where all this drama and nonsense was not there. Now it's just, uh, and another thing is, uh, you may know this or not know this, I get so many messages from so many, uh, you know, people who know Arabic, who see the Houthi tweets, they keep publishing, we're going to attack 
Burj Khalifa, we are going to attack Dubai. And this uh, Houthi general is saying, investors, be careful, Dubai is not safe. I mean, it is going non-stop. And people who stay in Ajwan and Abu Dhabi and all that, some of them are telling me there's so much of checking going on. There are military helicopters and there are airplanes. And people who are in the military, means with the military background, are saying, you know, there's a lot of uh, plane activity, helicopter activity. and Nobody wants all this. This is the problem. Nobody wants all this. Nobody's interested in all this. People just want to earn, earn their earn money, be safe, be secure, live their lives. I will just end by saying this: that uh, you, see, UAE has more to lose than to gain by continuing this. And the unfortunate thing is, ever since they made. They signed up with Israel and US. US just wants to sell its weapons. US would love for a war to take place because it's not near its shores, it's far away. And they're very happy because they have to sell weapons, right? Israel would definitely like the Arab Muslim states to be destabilized. You know, when the GCC was one, when OPEC was one, when all the Arab Muslim states were one, Israel had a lot of worrying to do, you know? And uh, U.S. was being very humble and nice and sweet. Now U.S. is very happy. Divide and rule. Oh, you're all broken. You're not friends with him. He's not friends with you. Take some weapons here to protect from him. Oh, you take some weapons to protect from him. <sighs> yeah, they have to make money. They're in the business of weapons, right? Like the pharmaceutical trade. They're in the business of selling medicines and, uh, you know, you're sick. Oh, very good. Oh, protect yourself from this virus, that virus. Take this shot, take that shot. That's how they make money. You see, this is a game of money. You just have to open your eyes and see what is going on. When you create a problem and you are able to provide a solution, you make money. So, US is nobody's friend. That is one thing which all the economies have realized. That is why now every country is playing a political trump card. You get uh, Russia, China together, and of course, Venezuela and all these other places. Now, US wants to show Russia pressure. So they are bringing Ukraine into NATO and Russia saying, yeah, don't fuck around with me. I find it so funny when you see this old man, Biden, uh, reading from the teleprompter and threatening uh, uh, Putin. It's so comedic. An old man, hardly like this, he's threatening. Uh, you know, Russian president was must have been laughing. In fact, uh, did you see the, you know, Vladimir Putin meeting the French president? It's so funny. The table is so bloody long. It's like, uh, couldn't you make the table any longer? I mean, it's like, hey, French president. And the French president, yeah, Vladimir. <laughs> Such a big, long table. It's so comedy. And even when they had to finally speak to the press, he was one side. The French president on the other side, and when they left, they normally shake hands and they're close together. They kept them far apart, and Vladimir went first, and the French president followed him because he wanted to tell him, he's my dog. <laughs> oh, if you study the nuances of politics now, such an interesting. It was so funny. French president wanted to show power, put in tolerance, down boy, down. Don't act smart with me. Don't wag your tail and show you're the leader of NATO. Fuck you. So, he was hospitable, he maintained diplomatic relations, but he put him in his place. Uh, and UAE wants to show, you know, US don't act smart with us. So they went to the Olympics and they shook hands and China is, a, it's, it's all a game and it's a chess game. It's, a, it's very interesting and funny at the same time, but at the same, but the problem is only, you'll have people who will, uh, it's uh, lay people who will suffer. Anyway, I was not convinced uh, uh, with this French president. He is just looking to position himself as a leader and take advantage of the opportunity. Russia knows that he's playing. So. Anyway, these are my thoughts. You let me know what are your thoughts. Love to hear from you. And yeah, comment down below. Let me know what I need to know. And yeah, stay safe. Keep gas cylinders safe including your drones. 
राइट गाइस ठीक है चल